Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is September 12th, 2023, and let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So I'm going to do a very quick map update and then the news. So yesterday was a very good video that came out from the Ukrainian Special Forces, and they showed their operation at liberating a complex of gas drilling platforms called, uh, known as the Boyko Towers in the middle of the Black Sea. So somewhere located between Snake Island and the Crimean Peninsula, the Ukraine, Ukrainian Special Forces used a couple of patrol ships uh, to land and liberate uh, the uh, gas drilling platforms. And what was interesting in that video that they released is that they managed to also damage a Russian Su-30 fighter jet that was summoned to intercept them, and they managed to damage it. So it proves yet again that the Russians are not feeling comfortable. Uh, operating their ships and their fighter jets in the middle of the Black Sea. They are under threat, especially in terms of their Black Sea fleet because the Ukrainians that don't have a navy are operating the unmanned sea vessels that have been so destructive against the Russian Black Sea fleet and also Russia's infrastructure in Crimea. They've hit the Kerch Bridge at least once with these unmanned sea vessels and they have managed to penetrate several times the Sevastopol Bay and also Novorossiysk, which is a little bit further away, much, much further away from um, Crimea. So the Russians are not feeling safe at all in the Black Sea. So let's hope that this continues and the trend continues with more Ukrainian amphibious landings, whether it be in Mykolaiv, Kherson, or in Crimea, who knows. The other development is that just a few hours ago, a Russian Su-24 crashed in the Volgograd uh, oblast in Russia. The details are still unknown. Whether the pilot survived, I don't know, but it's an indication that the Russians are fighting uh, with or flying airplanes that are probably faulty, poorly maintained, and I think if I'm correct, let's say for an F-16, for every every hour that an F-16 flies, it needs about 17 to 18 hours of maintenance. Do you think the Russians are doing this type of maintenance or their own jet fighters? I really doubt it. So expect more and more of these stories in the future because the Russians, uh, especially the Su-24, it's a very durable airplane actually, but um, after a certain point, you know, nothing is uh, indestructible. So uh, I can only wish more Russian uh, jet fighters to demilitarize themselves and do the right thing. And also speaking of Russian uh, planes, there's also uh, a Russian commercial airplane, so civilian airplane, that had to do an emergency landing somewhere in Siberia. Uh, and the details are not known, but there's rumors that um, indicate that it was hydraulic or something about the hydraulic system not functioning. And they had to do an emergency landing and they ran out of fuel eventually because they had to find the right runway to do a much longer landing and they ran out of fuel and then the plane had to glide and essentially had to do an emergency landing somewhere in Siberia. So again, uh, that's what happens when um, you don't have the right maintenance, the right parts, you have planes falling out of the sky. And in terms of the map, so let's get into the southern front because there's been a few Ukrainian advancements in the south. In the Orykhiv axis, the Ukrainians have pushed and liberated um, northeast of Novoprokopivka, a few fields. You can see that a few days ago, this was still a contested area around here. And the Ukrainians liberated it. So they continue their push towards Novoprokopivka and towards Verbove. The main goal is to continuously um, destroy Russian logistics, but also focus on Russian artillery. And I can, can confidently say that we're reaching a point where Ukraine is finally reaching equilibrium, a parity. Whereas Russians had a massive advantage of artillery systems over the Ukrainian forces um, in the early phase of this war, we can tell with confidence that the Ukrainians every single day have been destroying 20 to 40 Russian artillery systems. And they're really feeling it because uh, that's going to impact how quickly Ukrainians can advance. So if we see more and more of these, um, the shortage of artillery from Russia's side, that's only going to help Ukraine uh, push further and further away. Because let's face it, Artillery is the name of the game here. It's been a mainly, this war has been mainly an artillery war. And so who has the biggest guns and the most guns wins and is able to conduct successful operations. So if Ukraine is capable of really, really decimating, Rush, decimating Russia's artillery, um, I can confidently say that this advancement, the push is going to go much faster than expected. 
And the last little update is around Veliko Novosilka. So west of Staromayorske, the Ukrainians liberated uh, northeast of Priutne some fields. You can see that uh, they managed to push out the Russians around here, northeast of Priutne. And also, officially, you can see that Novo Mayorske is contested. So north of the village, the Ukrainians are now fighting for Novo Mayorske. You can see here. And again, they push, they continue pushing towards Zavitne Bajanya around the uh, the Mokreyale Valley here. So this is still going to be a very long fight. As I've mentioned in my previous video, do not underestimate the Russian forces. They are much better prepared. Uh, they're willing to die for all the wrong reasons. And they still believe the propaganda that if they're captured, if they surrender, uh, they're somehow going to be skinned alive or tortured to death. So expect the Russians to put a very, very heavy fight and resistance. And I'm not anticipating for things to get easier for the Ukrainian forces as they continue pushing. So that's pretty much it. Let's get into the updates as well. So in terms of the news, uh, two dictators met today. And guess who they are? So that is Kim Jong-un and Putin, of course. And General Miley could not have put it better. So Putin has turned to North Korea with a tin cup in hand because Russia is desperately in need of weapons. And that includes artillery systems. And guess what? North Korea has a lot of them. North Korea is a military state and they have a lot, a lot, a lot of Soviet weaponry that they can potentially give to Russia. And even... Indirectly, China can give weapons to North Korea and they can be transferred to Russia as well. Let's not forget that. I don't think that is going to happen. We know that China is indirectly supporting Russia through, you know, selling, importing uh, goods, microchips, even helmets and ballistic vests. But overall, we haven't seen China fully commit to giving actual weapons to Russia. And I don't think they're going to do it because that will come, that will be... Uh, there'll be heavy consequences and the United States and Europe has warned China about it, that this will be an escalation and there could be some sanctions against uh, China. And why would you want to invest into a sinking ship? Russia is literally a sinking ship. Why would you invest all your assets, your weapons, your finances into Russia that is collapsing? It's in their interest to just have uh, unstable, weak Russia. That's it. So I find it very comical that a country that we believed a few years ago was a superpower is now begging North Korea for weapons. And lastly, the Army Tactical Missile Systems. So I've heard these stories multiple times in the last few months, and I have no doubt that Ukraine is going to receive them. There is no doubt that Ukraine is going to receive these long-range missiles, and I, I don't know if it's just me, but there's definitely been... Um, I haven't heard as many stories of the Ukrainians using the uh, storm shadows or the scalps, meaning that most likely Ukraine is ran out of them or is almost out of these long range missiles that Britain and France give gave to Ukraine. So they are in need yet again of long range missiles. And the United States have plen has plenty of these army tactical missile systems. So the question here is not if Ukraine is going to receive them, but when. And it's always been a matter of the timeline. And, you know, Ukraine. Beggars can be choosers. Unfortunately, Ukraine has to uh, accept the United States schedule. And unfortunately, I think that is going to be a question of months, not weeks. Ukraine is going to receive them, but most likely in 2024, in my opinion. Again, this is um, America's or Biden's administration policy. They do not want to escalate things. I can understand why. But we need to understand as well that this comes every single day where Ukraine doesn't receive the weapons they need. This comes at the expense of Ukrainian lives every single day. Weapons that could be used right now to destroy Russian command posts, Russian artillery systems, Russian logistics that are crucial and is the lifeline of Russia's military doctrine. So we'll see them in Ukraine. There's no doubt about it, but it's just a question of time. And you can see that with the range of 190 miles, almost 200 miles, these army tactical missile systems can hit pretty much anything within Ukrainian territory. So that includes Crimea. And I believe that, of course, the United States, when they'll give it to Ukraine, they'll probably uh, ask Ukraine to not use them in Russia. So against Russian targets in Russia to not escalate things. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that Ukraine is going to receive them in a matter of a few weeks or in a few months or in 2024? 
I'm uh, interested to hear, interested in hearing your opinion. So I appreciate your support for my channel. Please, if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you and Slava Ukraini.